Wondering how to get your listings priced correctly and have the sellers on board? This video is for you. Two of the most critical steps in the listing process are getting it priced correctly. Also, we want to make sure that the seller is all in on how we're pricing it with an understanding of the process we're using to get to the sale. So I want to give you three techniques today that you can present to the seller on how we're going to price this to make sure that they have buy-in. There's an old saying, there's the golden rule, which says that we treat people the way that we want to be treated. But there was a book a few years ago called The Platinum Rule. And what I like about The Platinum Rule is, is it says, treat people the way they want to be treated. So what I want to do is I want to show you these three techniques and then I'm going to give you the question to ask at the end that will help you get the buy-in. The first way to price it is data-driven. So let's say that the comparable sales that we have show that the value is 950,000 just to make the numbers easy for this example. If it's 950,000 and we also look and we see that that's where, not only is it gonna appraise at that price, but that's probably where it's gonna sell based on these comparable sales. What do these comparable sales, what was the list of sale price? If we find out, just to make the numbers easy, that it's 95%, then in this situation, we would price the house at $1 million, understanding that on an average negotiation, the seller's gonna give up 5%, and we're gonna end up at the number we wanna end up at. This is a way where it's very numbers driven, data driven. This is for that analytical seller that really wants to make sure that they understand the numbers and that it falls in line with something that reasons with them very well. The second way is this, creating urgency. You know, we're in a place right now where there's so much, there's so limited in, amount of inventory that people almost have this fear of loss. And so we can utilize that in this process to possibly get multiple offers. So in this situation, if the comparables show 950,000, price the home at 950,000. When we price it at 950,000, we've got buyers that are in the market now, they know the comparables as well as we do. They know the values there. They know this property has been priced correctly and odds are it's gonna receive multiple offers. It gives us the ability to create that urgency and that fear of loss, which can create multiple offers, which can create sometimes selling these places for more than list price. This has happened a number of times. I would just encourage you, if you don't have stories of how each of these have worked, ask people in your office. For instance, we've got an example now where we had one that was 8.95 million. We'd used this urgency, where we were creating the sense of urgency, and when we priced it at that, it sold for full price because the value of the property was right where, we priced it right where the value was. Somebody else was afraid that they were gonna miss out and so they came in with a full price offer very shortly after it was listed. Also, the third way, retail pricing. Now, this is for the person that probably feels like, I just wanna make sure I maximize the price of this. And th what can do in this situation is, is you wanna take and you know that it's $950,000 is what it should appraise for. We all know in our market environment now, sometimes things will sell for more than what they actually will appraise for. So with the retail pricing situation, what we would do is, is we would price it 10 to 12% above, a million 50, a million 75. This gives the opportunity for us to price it for retail pricing, understanding that the real value is down here. Now what this does, I wouldn't just do this. You don't wanna just overprice listings. You wanna make sure if you're gonna do retail pricings, that upfront, you get a standardized plan that if we don't have an offer within three weeks, we will reduce 25,000. If we do not have another offer, an offer within another, we're gonna re reduce another 25,000. Have the plan of action. Think of it come from coming from the end. If we're gonna price at retail, the market is gonna tell us what the value is. If the market's willing to yield a million fifty, that's great. But with the marketing plan that we all do for our sellers, we know that if the market is out there, our marketing is gonna yield that price. So this is the retail pricing. Price it high with an understanding that you're gonna do stepping down, laddering down to where the real value is, where the market will tell you when it's willing to pay what it's willing to pay. These are three techniques that are out there. Three different people. We deal with all kinds of different sellers. The critical part is once you've presented these three programs to the seller, say, let me ask you, Mr. Seller, which of these do you think would fit your property best? If they say, data-driven, price it data-driven. If they say, we want to create some urgency, we want to get this thing sold fast, use that. If they say, I want to make sure I get every dollar, I think we should price it up here and let the market tell us what it's willing to yield. Price it that way. Ultimately, the bottom line is you're going to get that seller to where the market's willing to yield 
but you're giving it to them in a way, like the Platinum Rule says, the way they want to receive it. I hope this is helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.